Here at Time Sticking, we often get asked about Seiko and Pulsar watches, and more specifically how they can be compared. Well, today I'm going to discuss a brief history about the brands, and a few differences between them as well. So, without further ado, let's run the intro and get started. Seiko was formed in 1881 when a 22 year old man named Kintaro Hitori opened a watch and jewelry shop. In fact, the movements that are used in Seiko watches even today are called Hitori movements as an honor towards the company founder. In 1892, Hitori began to produce clocks also. The first watches Hitori created appeared under the Seiko brand in 1924, and while Seiko continued to grow, their engineers created many firsts in the watch industry. For example, in 1969, Seiko introduced the Astron, the world's first production quartz watch. In the late 1980s, Seiko produced the first automatic quartz that combined the self-energizing attributes of an automatic watch with quartz accuracy. The watch is entirely powered by its movement in everyday wear. In 1991, Seiko rebranded their automatic watch and called it Seiko Kinetic, which can best be described as an automatic watch on steroids. The Seiko Kinetic watch has the promise to hold a charge up to six months from everyday movement simply by wearing it, the same way an automatic watch can be charged. Seiko now produces quartz, kinetic, solar, and mechanical movements of varying prices. Now let's talk about Pulsar watches. Pulsar watches were created, like most things, from a vision. In the early 1970s, the Pulsar line was a brand of the Hamilton Watch Company, which at the time had recently moved their factory from Pennsylvania to Switzerland. At the time, Pulsar watches were a division of the Hamilton Watch Company, which belonged to the Burren Watch Company. A team led by John Berge of the Hamilton Watch Company designed, developed, and launched the Pulsar Time Computer, which was the world's first digital watch. Created a sensation when it unveiled in New York in 1972, and it changed the world's perception of time. A digital watch is very common today, but imagine seeing a digital watch for the first time and how cool that must have been. The Pulsar Time Computer sold for $2,100 US dollars, which was more than a new Ford Pinto went for at the time. $2,100 US dollars is more than $12,000 US dollars in today's money. The Pulsar watch was so popular it even appeared on James Bond's wrist in 1973's Live and Let Die movie. So how are these two innovative watch companies connected? Well, Pulsar joined the Seiko Watch Corporation in 1979, leaving the Swatch Group, which in 1974 had acquired the Hamilton Watch Company. Once Seiko had brought the brand to the world, this enabled the brand to have further growth. Pulsar brought the first calculator watch to the world in 1980, and Pulsar carried the first all quartz watch line in 1981. By the 1980s, Pulsar now had international distribution. In the 1990s, Pulsar added new lines including titanium, diamond, and a sports line. And even today, Pulsar continues to thrive. Seiko and Pulsar are owned and supported by the Seiko Holdings Group, but are marketed differently. Why you might ask? They are different price points and attract a different audience because of that. Pulsar watches are typically less money than a Seiko. It isn't too uncommon for a company to market similar products under a different name to different markets. It's sort of similar to Honda and Acura in the car industry. So what are some of the differences between the brands? Well, some of the watch cases could be made differently. The Pulsar case may have hollowed stainless steel links where the Seiko links are typically solid throughout. The movements are both Hitori Japanese quality, however. You may find more complicated movements in the Seiko line. Seiko and Pulsar both contain amazing history and are responsible for much of the luxuries we take for granted in watches today. Cheers to both of them. So let me know down in the comments what you think about Pulsar and Seiko watches, and I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure to give it a like, and if you'd like to see more content from us, you can subscribe right here. And as always, if you need any help repairing your watch, the link to our website is right here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.